Get Bye. excited. I'm ready to get going. Yeah. The mic is just being weird. All right, that should be clearer now. Is that better? That sounds better. Thank That's you. Way clearer. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna give me a headache. Yeah, it was just being <laughs> weird. But that should be it now. All right. So let us get into it. Uh, uh, for those of us, for those watching. This is going to be the first session of Against the Aeon Throne, Book 1, The Reach of the Empire. Uh, for my players, I'm going to put on my worst webcam so you can see what I do with my gestures and stuff, but there you go. And in just a few minutes, we are going to introduce our players. Uh, before that, just a little background on the campaign. So, at the moment... The PCs have been in drift space for uh, at least a week now. For those who don't know, drift space is the Starfinder equivalent of uh, like hyperspace from Star Wars, things like that. Uh, as they prepare to exit the drift, uh, they are all getting ready to help make a delivery at the new colony world of Nakondis. This company uh, is from the Pact Worlds, kind of the central system where they are from. They are making a delivery of necessary supplies like food, machinery parts, nothing incredibly valuable, but all things um, that are needed to help the colony thrive. Now, all of you had a kind of secondary motive in agreeing to this job, and that is... All of you know someone personally who has come to live on Nakondis. Um, all of you are friends with Sedona, uh, a researcher and lover of technology who has come here to kind of start a new life, and she wants you all to meet her there. Um, as we exit the drift, give me two minutes right here. I'm going to try to see if we can get our music working. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. Let's switch it to cruising through space. Excellent. So, I'm going to bring us over to our map. Um, and before we get to know our ship, I want us to get to know our players. So once I bring us over to the map, we are going uh, to, you guys will be able to drag your tokens on, and I'm going to have people introduce their characters one at a time. So first up, um, why don't we have uh, Zashi? Would you like to introduce your character and kind of drag your token onto the map? Yes, I will try. No worries. Uh, so to drag it on, just hover over your character name till it turns blue, uh, and then just click and drag anywhere on the spaceship, and it should drop it down there. All right, so I'm not seeing... I'm just seeing a black rectangle. Oh, can you guys not see the spaceship yet? Yeah. All right, give me one sec. No, it's all dark. Bup, bup, bup. Um... It was there for a second. <laughs> How about now? I got it. We got it? Excellent. Cool beans, cool beans. Oh, um... Yeah, I can change that in a bit, Diane. It might have to be next stream. I'll try to fix the overlay. I'll try to do it on the fly. I don't like that sound pack for a second. I'm going to pause it. 
Um, so, uh, are you able to drag your character on now? Where would I find my character token? Here, I, I'll help you out with that. No worries. This is a uh, oh, roll twenty. Oh, oh, you got it. There you go. All right, so yeah, yeah, you just hover over it and then click and drag wherever you want it. Excellent. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so everyone can see. Cool. All right. So uh, tell us about Zashi, our first character of the campaign. So Zashi is a human female soldier. Uh, she grew up on Akaton, um, kind of working basically her whole childhood um, in restaurants and that sort of thing. And, uh, but a lot of her family was um, involved in the gladiator events. And so she has experience with fighting from training with them. And she's out in the world now, uh, you know, seeing what's out there, adventuring. Awesome. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> Next up, let us hear from MK01. Sure. And I'll shrink uh I'll shrink Zashi back down a little bit. Uh so MK01 is a uh android mystic. Uh he is 2 years old uh and is from striving on Abalon. Uh he was created by a uh, sect of those who become the native Anasites on Abalon mm -hmm. to spread knowledge of Triune and the Drift uh, farther into uh, the Vast. Um, he spent a year and some change uh, studying the stars and traveling the Pact Worlds uh, and is now uh, looking forward to visiting his uh, friend, on the Condus and going even farther uh, out past act space, as it were. Hell yeah. All right. And next up, uh, you guys will see on the screen, I did not realize one of our characters had changed names, so we just have a brief little not as cool looking label, but it'll help us clarify. Next up is, is it Kos or Kos? Kos. Kos. All right. Kos, you want to introduce yourself? Koss? Yeah, sorry. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Um, so, Koss is a Nor, Nor mechanic. He grew up on Absalon Station. Not a man of many words, but he is always moving and tinkering around, tinkering with anything mechanic he can find, even some things not mechanic, if he can figure it out. All so, right. excellent. And ahead, one going. horn you will notice is actually metal. Very cool. He I like lost that. it at a young age. I love that. All right, next up we have uh, one of our smaller friends. What about Flack? Yeah, so. Flack is a young Yosoki operative from Akaton. He's on the tall side for his race at four feet tall. He's got white to light gray fur and black eyes. Um, he walks very lithe and smooth. He has a short blue mohawk. Um, if you've met Yosoki before, you'll notice that he's quite a bit less twitchy and frantic than normal, but there is an occasional mischievous curl to his smile. He is a self-described freelance problem solver. I love that. Gotta have a problem solver aboard every ship. All right. So last but not least, uh, how do you pronounce the the new name, Diane? What's uh, what's your? Uh, why don't you drag your new character on? All righty. Somebody else had a similar name in another game of yours, so I figured I'd better change up. It's fair. So this is this is Lie. She is from Castroville. She comes from a long line of strong, independent women 
who lead their world and their families with a strong and strong will and sometimes an iron fist. Hell yeah. Education is their catchphrase. And making their world stronger, better place is her mission. She is a Lashanta envoy, and she's out to learn all she can learn. As her uh, telepathy grows, she had to have something that uh, did not, she couldn't read. So she has a companion that looks like a little steampunk puppy. No, it's a cat. Steampunk cat. Steampunk and, cat. Uh, her name is Katra, and if you see her, she'll just be scurrying around. She means no harm, well, as far as I can tell. Awesome. Um, for some reason, that cat did not... If you want to send me the cat again, uh, the file, Roll20 did not like the file that I put up the first time. If you want to just message it to me on Discord, I'll add the cat in. All right. So those are our five crew members. And after some discussion before the game, they have decided on the ship name of the Selogia. A beautiful flower. Feel free to look it up. It's awesome. I really like it. And you guys are kind of just all chilling in your own bunk spaces right now on the ship. Uh, but shortly, that is going to change. Uh, anyone have any questions before we really jump into it? Cool, cool. All right. Uh, before we fully jump into the campaign, uh, I'm just going to read out a little blurb for Sirenscape. So that's the sound sets we're going to be using for tonight, specifically Sirenscape Sci-Fi Player. And for all of those watching, if you or someone you know wants to join in the raffle, uh, we are going to raffle off two months free of their Super Siren service, which lets you make, like, custom sound sets, edit the sound sets that exist, all sorts of cool stuff with their new um, Sirenscape online beta. It's really, really cool. I was playing around with it earlier. But uh, let's give them a little thanks. So thanks, as always, to Sirenscape for the amazing atmosphere and music. You can add sounds like these we're using tonight and more to your game when you download either the Sirenscape desktop or mobile app. The app comes free, uh, is free and comes with 20 sound sets that are included to get you started. You don't even need to register. Go to sirenscape.com to find out more. All right. Excellent. All right. Apologies, reading a lot of different stuff right now. So, as you all drop out of the drift, um, you hear kind of like a flashing um, alarm coming from the area, uh, the, the front of the ship. And you quickly realize that it is signaling you all that ships have been detected in atmosphere over the colony, ships that should not be there. You all know there are not any there's not supposed to be any scheduled traffic during your delivery. You guys are all currently in your rooms. What would you like to do? Yeah, so Flack is going to pop up out of his rack and he's going to head up and uh, up into the uh, front of the ship and take a look and see what's going on. Alright. Lee will follow behind him. Sounds good, sounds good. All right, and uh, can you guys also... see the map key in the top? Just want to make sure you guys can see it as well. Uh, no. I don't see a map key. All right, let me make sure you guys get that. I just assumed the front part was the... Coming through a bit better, it looks like, on Twitch's end. The 
we we said that the tier of this ship was one, right? Uh, yes, yes. I believe we were still going to use the weaponry and stats of the what was the other name of the ship? Um, the Void Sweeper or something. So this one's the oh, Void Sweeper. Yeah, 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 that one. Gotcha. Um, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have those stats pulled up as well. Um. All right, the Kelavari Venture. There we go. I see it. All right, well, we got no viewers right now, but it looks like the stream is not freezing anymore. So there you go. <laughs> Fixed it. Yeah, well, let's fix. It was them. It wasn't us. They will come, don't worry. And now we got Ketra all saved too, so that's perfect. Yay, can I put her on the deck up here somewhere with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to upload her to be probably right by like the captain chair. Sweet! Alright, let's see. Come on, Catra. There we go. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, I'm going to make the... looks like everyone is back good. Everyone can see the streams. We're doing good. I'm going to make Katja a little big right now so the stream can see her. Because I think it's a fucking adorable picture. Um, all right. So, you guys drop out of the drift. And... That's too loud. Turn that down a little bit. All right. As you guys drop out of the drop out of the drift, you heard the alarms going off. Um, who is at our science station? Uh, although, actually, the science. Catra. Uh, Catra. <laughs> So, anyone who can see through the viewport actually at the front display, you guys realize that there are two orbital drones zipper, zipping around the planet of Nakondis, and they appear to be on an intercept vector. Uh, anyone who can, like, anyone who'd like to, can make an engineering check on them, uh, as well as, if you want to, you can make a culture check. So, can Lee contact the engineer in the back? And ask him. Here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So Flack, uh, you like examine uh, your instruments over in engineering, as the captain radios into you, and as you examine the view feed coming into you uh, at the back over here by engineer. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, so Flack did engineering. MK did engineering. Costs. Are you doing engineering at the back? Yeah. All right. Uh, so go ahead and click. All right, perfect. So, uh, you guys radio to uh, cost to confirm, but the lot of you quickly realize that these are not um, in any way manned ships. These drones also don't... They're drones, and they also don't have a drift-capable engine, meaning that they must have been dropped off by a larger ship Although you do not see any larger ship on your sensors or anything like that. It's a short range fighter. As you guys come to this conclusion, I'll head anyone... to small moon. Oh, MK01 with the culture <laughs> check with that 19. You like look at their design, like it doesn't look like anything in the Pact World systems. And then it hits you. An article on the infosphere, which is like the internet, uh, but it's usually localized to different locations. An article you're reading on the Infosphere at Absalom Station strikes you. 
realize that these drones look like they were deployed by the aggressive and expansionist Aslanti Star Empire. All right, so with that, we are going to go ahead and move right away into our first starship combat. This is a very different mechanic than we have used in my Pathfinder streams. As can be seen by the fact that we are going to be using hexagons. Alrighty. Alright, so I'm going to get a little token out. Um... So these are gonna be the fog of war is still up, I think. Yeah, I'm just I'm just getting ready for I'm just getting the the ships ready. Cool. All right, so we're gonna have two orbital drones. And we're going to have you in the shape of a Vanguard Void Sweeper. Alright. So, let's get into it with our lighting. Alright, everyone should be able to see. Ooh. Everyone good? Alright. So, we are going to... I'm going to roll randomly to determine... Uh, just how far um, these things were basically off of your air, like off the ship's bow before uh, you dropped out of the drift. So that's going to be... Alright, this is a big starship map. So they are going to be about 11 squares away from you. 11 hexagons. Let's back them up a little bit. Back them up a little bit over here. All right. And I got my quick reference handy dandy DM screen for Starfinder in front of me. Alright, so with that, uh, we are going to get into our combat. I believe when uh, you are both starting off in the combat, uh, I believe it's opposed piloting checks to see who, which ships are moving first. Great. So who do you, can our, does our pilot want to go ahead and make their piloting check versus the Aslanti drones? All right. They uh did not did not do twenty one good. Um. So I believe since you won, you get to go second and base what you do off of their actions. Yes. So you will be able to adjust where everything is firing and all that. Um. So these two drones, while small and unmanned, uh, are fairly fast. And are fairly, uh, fairly, uh, what's it called? They have good maneuverability. So they are both going, they're both going to attempt a, f I believe it's a flyover technique. Uh, but they are barely going to be able to make it by you. They're each going to fly over your prow and are essentially directly behind you now. And are each going to make an attack. Uh, this is going to be a light laser cannon. Alright. And 
I got your guys' starship up as well, the Ventra. Let's see if they hit on your ship's AC. All right, uh, one of them is going to get through. And with that light laser blast, you're going to take three total damage to the forward shields, uh, reducing your forward shields to currently two. So you guys, uh, the, your ship starts with 20 total shields, a basic shield, uh, which is currently distributed five points to forward, port, starboard, and aft. Although now your forward shields are reduced down to two. Uh, with that, we are going to move on to your crew's turns. Um, so just so we know, for the captain, the captain can act during any phase. Uh, but they can only take one action during their phase. Does that make sense? I guess when I mess up, you'll tell me I messed up. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so. Let's get our crew cards up. And our first phase is going to be piloting. Uh, so, our pilot, what exactly would you like to do? Uh, uh, you can do maneuvers. There are things like backing off, barrel roll, evade, flip and burn, flybys, slide, turn in place, things like that. Uh, these these two drones are directly in front of us, right? Uh, they're actually directly behind you. So the, the, your tokens, let me let me rotate your token. But yeah, they basically were flying towards you from the front, did like a flyby maneuver, you know, 3D space over your ship's top edge. Fired off lasers, one laser to the shields, one laser missed, and then they ended up, like, directly behind you. Okay. So, um... Spin your ship. There you go. So, nice. I think I'm, what I want to do is, uh, I'll do a stunt. All right. Excellent. And I, I want to do a turn in place. All right. I don't think that I don't think that that requires a um, a roll. Uh, let me double check. Turn in place. Uh, do not move. Rotate to any fa any facing. Um, what We're not is? Clumsy or poor, yeah, so you're not clumsy not or poor. Easy. Yeah, you can just uh, you haven't really hit any major thrusters. You like just came out of the drift or like literally, you know pardon the pun, slowly drifting across space, you could just kind of hit the maneuvering thrusters and do a 360 spin if you would like. It's exactly what I, I, have to, I want to do a 180 so we're pointing right, 180, yep. right at them. All right. We can go to guns. All right, so you do a 180 uh, coming about with your weapons. Uh, next up, we're going to do our engineering phase. Um, and do you have, Diane, do you have the uh, captain's cards up? Because I can like suggest some stuff that they can do. Where do I find the captain's cards? Here, uh, let me. I'm gonna copy the image. Uh, I okay. said I sent them out a really long time ago, but I have oh, like a I'm pack sorry. of. Uh, no, no, no. This was like weeks and weeks ago. Uh, there, I sent out like a pack of like cheat cards to everybody. Okay. Um, this is the captain one. So captains can do things like demand, where they make an intimidate crew, intimidate check, and it gives your allies a boost. Like you're like you know ensign. Get that shot together. Make sure you hit them. And if you succeed at the Intimidate check, they get plus four to hit. You can try to encourage people with diplomacy. You can try to taunt the enemy ship. Uh, you can try to give orders. And I believe you can give a moving speech as well. Um, you said that these were unarmed, right? There's, they're not people in there, right? Yes. These are You guys did dis uh, discover these are unmanned drones. Okay. So, to, uh, yeah. <laughs> making fun of their captains might be a bit... Uh, a bit too far. Right. Um, so she would grant additional action to target the alley. The alley. What? Hold on. I'm just no. manually changing the follower bar. Okay. There we go. All right. Now the count is accurate on our stream. Um, so you don't have to okay. act right now. You can let the engineering take their phase first, but they're going to be next. 
Okay. Also, I realized I did go out of order there, uh, for those who are Starfinder pros, and if you're watching this. Normally it is engineering, then the helm. Oh, okay. Uh, alright. So, but let's double back to engineering. So the engineer, uh, you can, like, repair starship systems, you can give a system a boost, uh, you can, like, redirect shields. Uh, what are you feeling at the back for costs? Uh, feeling a little shake, and then the ship completely turn. Mm -hmm. He's going to divert power to guns, to weapons. All right. Uh, there is a brief like, you know, you like quickly type at your keyboard, look over, redirect some of the power, and now your ship's weapons are uh, in receiving an increase of their share of power. Any ones you roll uh, are treated as twos on your damage. And that is going to bring us to our gunner. Well, can I jump into the engineering phase? Yeah, you want to jump in? The, yeah. So. Uh, oh yeah, science one officer. Of the jump that, one of the things one of the things that I can do is precognition. Oh. Um, I'm gonna use my supernatural senses and a spark of divination magic to see my opponent's motion before it happens. Hell yeah. Uh, assuming I make the check. And that'll grant the pilot a plus two circumstance bonus to their next piloting check. That's very so, cool. That is a mysticism, and the DC is ten plus one and a half times my starship's tier. Oh right, this is the, to, the new like, uh, the mystic uh, crew roll, right? Right. right. Nice, nice. Yeah, this is a new so roll since I first played. That's awesome. All right. Uh, go for your mystic your mysticism roll right here. Uh, I think that makes it. I believe that is a success. So, uh, MK01, your eyes and, like, the kind of circuitry tattoos on your skin briefly flare up uh, with, like, a little bit of blue light as magic courses through you. And you kind of just lean into the pod and, like, they're going to take, like, they're going to bank around this way. And you, like, give, like, a little bit of an idea of where the drones are going to try to swoop next. Um, and then that, have we gotten everybody? We got, uh, Captain, do you want to make any checks before we move to the gunnery phase? Um, she could grant additional action to target the alley, right? Uh, let me double check. Captain. It says or under orders. Grant additional action to target ally this round. The ally cannot pick the same action twice. Yeah, so you could try to grant, uh, the gunner an additional right. action during this round. That's what she wants to do. Okay. All right. Get him with your best shot. So it's going to be... that's uh, You'll have to make a check that is... Uh, f basically, that one is going to be the allies' key skill. So for the gunner, um, that is going to be... Uh, that's the attack. Oh, so that's gonna be on the attack roll with them. So you're gonna you're gonna have to roll a d20 plus your. What do they add to the gun to the to their shots? It's uh, bab mm -hmm. plus ranks and piloting. Yep. Uh, plus dex. Okay, so you're basically gonna have to make that same check as an order, um, and it's gonna be a DC 18 to succeed for you. So you're gonna have to uh, do a roll with your bab plus dex, which if you already have a like firearm weapon on you, you could just hit that macro. It'll be about the same, and then we'll add your ranks and piloting. You talking to me or the guy that's piloting? No, to, this is to uh, the captain. To oh, okay. Lie. Now you say that again slowly, so I know what you're talking about. Do what now? Um, so I'm gonna make a check. Yes. So you could okay. uh, roll your azimuth laser pistol, I believe, is your weapon. Um, yeah. And that'll okay. be BAB plus Dex anyway, and then we will add your piloting ranks to that. Okay. And later we can make in, like, an order macro. All right. Just... So that's the damage. Okay. Um, so the for that is going to be a fail on the order as you try to, like... Uh, basically direct, even with your bonuses from 
piloting, that's not going to be enough. As you try to direct our gunner on how to take the shot, and you're just not quite well versed enough on this particular weapon. Uh, okay. In this case, your main weapon, the forward weapon, is a light laser cannon. Uh, and then you also have a turret, which is the high explosive missile launcher. So that is going to be our gunner. Uh, I believe our gunner is... That's uh, Zashi. Yep. All right. So you can either... Do you want to use the forward... Um, the forward light laser cannon or you want to get into the turret? The turret does more damage. Do we think we need more damage against the drone? Or... I don't know. Um, uh, I would say sure. the turret's probably... The turret. Yeah, it's probably your strongest choice. Go for it. Alright. And then... So you are going to make a check as well. It's going to be your base attack bonus plus your dex. Plus your uh, piloting bonus. You know, if you if you do a fire at will, you can sh you can fire both weapons at the same time, right? Oh, that is true. Yeah. Uh, so if you do, let me check. Uh, yeah, fire any just two starship weapons. Uh, each attack is made at a minus four. Uh, so okay. would you like to fire at will? You can try. That would be a second uh, a second shot. Sure. Did I do that right on roll 20? Uh, yeah, so that's the piloting, and then we'll add your... What is your... Your base attack bonus is 1 as a soldier, I believe. And what is your dex modifier? Uh, 3. 3? Okay, so add an extra 4 to that. That would be a 14. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's just 2. Oh, I'm um... Confused. So that'd be... Th uh, plus another one. So it'd be 13 on the turret. Uh, that is not going to be enough to hit hit with the turret, but it, since you're firing at will, do an, another piloting check, and then we'll add those same bonuses. Okay. So that's a d20 plus piloting. Uh, and that is going to bring it up uh, to, I believe, a 14 this time. Uh, right. Which is going to be enough to hit. Okay. Yay. All right. <laughs> so there is uh, the first... The turret goes wide, but then the light laser cannon, you know, <laughs> flashes off at the, uh, are you going for the top drone or the bottom one? Uh, top drone. All right. Uh, and I believe a light laser turret, that's going to be 2d4. Uh, so easiest way to type that in chat is if you, I'll put it in quotes. Basically, you just do slash R space 2d4 like that, but without the quotes. Thank you. Also got my laser pistol here. All right, so that is going to be three damage. Uh, as it impacts, you realize that these things are kind of so small that they don't really have any shields on them. So this directly impacts uh, the drone, dealing those that three damage, and you know it, it deals it directly to the mechanical body of the drone. All right, so now... Good job. Good job. <laughs> First one got away from me, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Practice and make perfect. We'll get them all sooner or later. <laughs> hey, I hear we got another follow in there. Thank you, whoever is following. I appreciate you. Just reading some stuff right now. Uh, and next, we are going to start our next round of combat. So this time we'll do it the right way. Let's start with the engineering round. Engineering. Bridge to engineering. What would you like to do? Just real quick point of order for the guns, because I diverted power to weapons. So oh, the one yes, is a two, so it's four damage. Hell yeah, so you had extra damage. I forgot about that. The lasers nice. were supercharged, so you get an extra damage on that. Good call, Engineer. All right, um, is the next round of Starship Combat. Do you want to divert power, rearrange shields? What are you feeling? Cost. Hello. 
I can uh, go ahead and do my engineering yeah. round go ahead. action while we um, did. Uh, so last engineering round, I did the plus two to piloting. Is is that gonna? Yeah, carry so over that'll this... that that does carry over. It looks like I'm reading through your your new starship roll now. So basically, what's gonna happen? The normal rounds are engineering, then helm, then gunnery. So on the piloting turn during helm, uh, he'll get that bonus. Okay. So in the engineering phase here, I will uh, take a scrying action, which effectively works pretty much just like the science officer scan action. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, uh, so, uh, except it's a mysticism check for me. Okay, go ahead and make the mysticism check. And it's the same as the scan you said? Yeah, same as the scan action for science officers. All right, so it's going to be... Doo -doo -doo. For every five, you beat the DC. You learn another tier of unknown information. Um, so I believe you're going to learn the first tier of information here, uh, which is their living crew complement. You know, they're, it's unmanned. The ship classification... Uh, this is a tiny racer drone that has been retrofitted to include weaponry. Uh, you would know, again, the size is tiny. Uh, it has a speed of 12. And it has perfect maneuverability. So this thing can, like, turn on a dime. Uh, and I'm going to say, actually, with the... That was very close. I'm going to give you one more information. Uh, this is going to be their uh, hull points. This is their equivalent of HP. Uh, they, the one you hit has 16 health left. The one you did not hit has 20. Missile fodder. <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that, is our engineer back? Cost you here? Perhaps not. Yeah, Wi-Fi went down. Oh, okay. All right, um... So, yeah, your turn, Cost. What would you like to do with your engineering check this time? I'm going to keep the power at weapons. All right, continue to divert the power to weapons. Um, and what kind of check is that? Uh, do you want to roll to divert to weapons? I believe it's a DC 10 plus 2 times the tier. So, just DC 12. For engineering. Smashed it. Yeah, you easily are like... Uh, th this is like what you live for. You just easily like, reroute the power, get the weapons powered up again. You're just like, alright, this is engineering. Take the shot. Take the shot. And with that, let us move down. We've had our engineer. We've had our lovely mystic. And that's going to bring us to the helm with our piloting check. And this is going to be opposed by the other ships to see if you can outpilot these, like, really fast little racer drones. Uh, then that's the plus two from the previous round, bringing it up to a 23. Yeah, no, I, I added the plus two in the, in the roll, so it's fine. Oh, I see. Yeah, you had the plus two. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you smash them again. Uh, they're going to try and pull off a maneuver here. Uh, but you're going to get to respond however you'd like after that. So, what are they going to do? Alright. Um, they are going to try and do a flip and burn. Move forward, rotate facing. Alright. So, basically, they are both going to try to fly at top speed away from you. And at the end, do like a little barrel, like loop half loop overwards so they're facing you and once they do that they're gonna both try to like uh fire on you as they complete this complex swoop uh that is gonna be a success from both so they are both gonna get to about the edge of the map over here and now they like kind of flip rotate back towards you and they are gonna go in with two more light laser cannons um that is going to be so, so i don't one thing i kind of i'm not understanding is if if i beat them in the 
in the roll. Yes. They move first, but then I get a move before they fire, right? What's, what advantage do I get by beating their roll if they get a move and fire first? Hmm. I, yeah, I thought that the it went like engineering for everybody, helm. Oh, okay, for... I see. Yeah, it's, so it's going to be, you are right. Um, so basically what's going to happen... Move, and then we fire. Yeah, yeah, right. it's because right. their gunnery turn is like the way your gunnery turn works as well. I was getting a little bit thrown off because like they're drones and don't have a complex crew. But yeah, so basically what's going to happen is they succeeded the flip and burn. So they're over here with their weapons trained on your ship. And now you guys get to make a piloting check, and then you guys both go into gunnery. Can so, the captain do encouragement? Uh, yeah, you can do you at, at engineering helm or gunnery, the captain can jump in with one of their things. The only thing is they can only make one action around. Okay. So what would you like to do? You want to do encouragement? Yeah. All right. Uh, to, the to the gunner? Okay, so that's going to be a DC uh, 16 check on diplomacy. And if you oh, okay. succeed, it will be a plus two to the gunner. Ooh, on a nat 20. Nice. You just like, nice. you know turn back you lock eyes with the uh with, with your gunner and you're just like hey you got this shot you know take a breath line it up and zashi you knock them out of the sky zashi. and you got a plus two on your check uh and that is the captain for the round so now we're going in to the piloting um so what does the lovely flack want to do I believe it's flak piloting, right? Yes, it is flak. All right. So, um, so I can't, I can't move the uh, the token. But oh, I, I let, wanna, me, let, me, yeah, let me, let me, let me give you, let me give you control of it. Um, and I, and I think I understand how movement works, but you can correct me if I get it wrong. I will I think do my I best. have to move forward before I can move to a different angle, right? So. Yeah. So it, it depends on your maneuverability. Uh, which for you guys, Uh-oh. you are using, you have good maneuverability. Um, so basically, you have to make one square of forward movement before you can turn. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and let me make it so this is going to be controlled by. Controlled by the character saying That's not what I want. Um, it's not letting me grant it to you for some reason. I can tell you what I want to do. Yeah, just tell, tell me what you want to do right now, and I'm, I'm going to make a kind of cheap work around for now. Yeah, where do you want to move? Okay, so, um, and you can use the, the ruler move, function to show. I want to move, I want to move three hexes to here. Okay, one, two, three. And then I want to move, um, let's see here. I want to give him my side. So, yeah, four, five, six. That's as far as I can get. So, okay. So that gives them, instead of them hitting us in the front, they would hit us in the starboard side. So that's what I want to give them. I want to give them our starboard side. Makes sense. Yeah, that'll, that'll, um, your shields are still weakened to the front. So they're basically going to have to try and hit. Uh, with their firing arc, your starboard side, and that means we're going to move to our, our. Go ahead. And we have a turret, right? So the gunner can still hit. The yeah. So the turret. so the benefit of the turret is you don't have to worry about the firing arc of your forward mounted lasers. Uh, you can like swivel the turret whichever way. It's like a, if you guys ever watch like Star Wars Rebels, it's like the turret they have on the top of the ghost that they can like turn around. Maybe that was too specific a reference, but that's what I picture. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's go let's to the gunner. Yeah, like a ball turret. Uh, uh, Zashi. So you would have to... You, you couldn't do the like open fire with all the weapons, but you could still do the turret. Okay. And she still has um, her plus two, right? Yeah, and she'll have a plus two. Okay. So I'm just going to do like a regular shoot the turret at... 
Okay, so you're gonna shoot at the tur. So yeah, go ahead. That's gonna be you know d20 plus. Pi so just roll piloting, and then we'll add three from your decks in BAB, and another two from uh, your captain. So basically, whatever you roll plus five. Oh yeah, uh -huh. smashed it. Uh, yes. Do you want to fire? So the one on top is the one that's been previously injured, or do you want to fire the one at the bottom? Um, I'm gonna fire at the one on the bottom. We gotta wear them both down. So. All right, so that is going to be a missile turret. So it's gonna go off with a huge uh, explosion, and that's gonna be four d8. Four d8. Yeah, yeah much oh, more dev. Wow. Much more devastating weapon. <laughs> oh yeah, just Ooh. the the, yeah. the fucking oh, above the atmosphere sick. of Nakondas. Giant explosion as uh, the yes. first Aslanti drone is blown out of the sky and begins just like drifting through empty space. Lee walks. Lee Ann walks over and pats her on the back and does a high five. Great shooting. Great shooting. <laughs> I love this commitment. <laughs> yeah. What a supportive crew. <laughs> Oh, I see. I see some some hate of rebels in the chat. Clone Wars is superior. Look, don't get me wrong. Clone Wars is superior. Rebels is still dope, though. <laughs> I do love me the Clone Wars, though. Uh, all right, that was a crazy shot. All right, let's go to the top of our order again. Uh, let's bring it back to engineering. In this case, they're just drones that don't really have an engineering officer. But uh, what is Cost gonna do at the engineering deck at the back of the ship? Hearing that amazing shot, you will keep diverting powers to weapons. Oh yeah, you probably have like some like windows open on your monitor that's like the external cameras, and you just see this like plume of like multicolored fire as like whatever metals were in this Aslanti, you know, metal composition like flare like green and pink in the void of space. Uh, yeah, the about... captain would keep a mic open so that they could converse with him so he could hear everything that was going on up. Oh, yeah, you guys so probably all have open communication. Like, you guys can hear over the ship's, like, PA system exactly who's doing what. And as of, like, there's a camera on him, when he sees the explosion and all the scrap metal, just his eyes get huge. Like, I can work with that. <laughs> Hell, yeah. <laughs> Jackpot. I'm gonna round up some scrap metal after this, boys. Score. Uh, all right, so do you want to keep powering up the weapons? Yeah. All right, hell yeah. Make that engineering check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what you're doing. All power to the weapons, baby. Uh, <laughs> so do we want to have our uh, Mystic jump in here for this round? Do you want to do after engineering? All right. Yeah, uh, so... I'll do uh, precognition again to give a plus two to piloting. All right. Uh, I believe that is still a success. Uh, MK01, you kind of still have your eyes closed in concentration. As again, you're just like activating the spell and just like talking almost constantly, feeding information to Flack as he gets ready to like phew, divert the starship to a different angle. Uh, next is going to be Helm. Let's do our opposed piloting checks and then we'll get into gunnery. I feel like we're now we're getting the hang of this now. Let go, Flack. <laughs> Let go. Use cool. the force, Flack. <laughs> All right, just just in case you guys are curious, these things are supposed to be highly maneuverable drones. Between the two of them, haven't rolled higher than a four on the die <laughs> on their piloting jets. Yeah, awesome. That's beginner's luck, baby. Beginner. Absolutely, <laughs> you are absolutely running circles around these drones. All right, so this one. Ooh, what's it gonna try and do? It is gonna try, and it's got perfect maneuverability, so it's basically gonna try and swing around behind you. Uh, so that's gonna be five hexes, six hexes. Uh, probably go a little bit farther, actually. Ten. All right. So it is gonna move uh, behind the ship, facing at the vanguard. Uh, sorry, it's not a vanguard. Technically, it's the what is the Salosia? Is that how I say it? Yep. All right, the Salosia. Uh, it is facing your aft on the engine side. 
Um, what would you like to do with your piloting check to kind of avoid this? Uh, we can still shoot backwards, right? So, um, you know, I, I think I'm just going to kind of move around it and try and give them the starboard side again. I can't, right? Like, it's too far to get around. So if we go... Um, what kind of stunts could you do, <laughs> Missile Turret Goper? Well, I could do a flip and burn, but I don't necessarily want to give them the front because we still haven't... Um, That's true. You still have a shields. two shield. You only have two shield on the front. So, um, and I'm kind of facing the other way. So I got to do I yeah. Do you're a bit you're of a basically turn. So let's like just, uh, do away from him. Look, I think eventually yeah, what I'm going to do I, for next space combat, by the way, I'm just going to make a character sheet for your ship, and give you guys all control of that. Um, oh, right now, I'm basically just using like the, their default Vanguard uh, token, which I realize like, I can't link to your character sheet. So we will rectify that before right. next time we're in space for combat. Cool. All right, so where would you like so, to move? Uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm going to uh, maybe I'll turn the other way here, and uh, we'll give them the uh, we'll give them the old uh, port side. So let's go uh, one, two, turn, and then one and turn again. I'm just just however it works out to point him, just to give him as much of the port as I can. All right, yeah, you moves. you yeah you uh, move around there. Probably gonna like. We'll say about there, average. So you're okay, showing him cool. the porch side shields now, which still have the full uh, five hit points on the shield. Um, Captain, do you want to make it? Everything's still in range there, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it's well in range. Let's see how many hexes okay. you guys are apart. You guys are seven hexes apart, technically, which I believe is in the range oh, yeah, okay. of your missile turret. Yeah. High explosive missile cool. launcher. All right, so... Also, I believe have we been adding there are bonuses you get from Oh no, sorry. Ignore me. I'm fine. Uh th there is there is a bonus to piloting. You get a plus two to piloting from this ship. Yeah, I've been adding that in. Okay, cool. Okay. I just wanna just wanted to make sure. Alright, uh so next is the gunnery phase. Uh the captain um Oh yeah, Captain, you wanna jump in with something? What do you wanna do? She do the encouraging again? Uh yeah. That's going to be a diplomacy. To yep. She will encourage the gunner again. Okay. Uh, I believe that is like exactly what you need as a success. Um, which is going to be... Yeah, that's a success. So you get the plus two on your check. Um, I believe technically the gunnery stages happen in tandem. So it's going to fire while you're firing. Okay. So roll your chance to hit, and it's going to go in with it on a light She'll laser cannon. Knock him out of the sky. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, yeah. E what? Even without the plus two decks Ooh, and wow. all that shit. All right, so the it laser. is going to impact you guys, the light laser turret on the port side, dealing five damage exactly. So this... um. The shields kind of flare a bright blue and go out on your port side. However, that is a hit. Roll a 4d8. Uh, this is one that was already injured. And your weapons are powered up, so only ones get to be re-rolled. Or get to be bopped up to twos. Sashi! 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 Yeah! Nice. So it uh, brings it up to an 18. Uh, it only had 16 left, as there is just another... Uh -huh. phew, boom! Massive explosion impact. As the Everyone second as Lanty drone. Going, Woo! That's right. Yeah! I was like <laughs> cheering as the ship utterly that, explodes. Did you see that? <laughs> All right. So with that, we are out of our first starship combat. Good job, guys. I know that was kind of a right. a new vibe to other role playing stuff. Uh, so How I'm gonna go move about us repairing the shields. Good point. Good question. Uh, I believe they the shields can regenerate over time, and you can also make knowledge engineering checks whenever like your actual uh, like hull is damaged. I'm gonna move us back to the ship map just for like role play purposes. All right. Can we try Slack to walks over to and uh, Slack's actually on the on the shoulder. Good shooting, man. Awesome. 
All right, and that's are you were asking if you could try to go collect the scrap? Yeah. <laughs> you want to pick up the space trash, do you? Um, I think that's a rad well, idea, and I feel like with your character and just who he is, he's probably got like a winch lined up. Um, so yeah, you can move. I'm gonna move your character over to uh the bu- 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 port side airlocks. Or uh, sorry, that's a uh, starboard, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, starboard. Does he tell us he's gonna do this so when it opens up, nobody freaks out? Uh, he could he could activate. I'm gonna say he could activate a winch without like there's a winch inside these airlocks. I'm okay. gonna say give me a knowledge engineering check. Or the, and, sorry, it's not really called knowledge anymore in this game, is it? Uh, just an engineering yeah. check to see how much scrap metal you can gather and see if maybe you could even snag some of their computers. As a with some piloting skills, could I possibly help out? To yeah, I'd, I'd say you could do a piloting check to assist. Uh, if, you, if you get over a 10, we'll give him a plus 2 on the engineering. Can the captain help in any way? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, so, captain can do a diplomacy check. Flack with a piloting so that's another plus 2 from Flack. And... A, oh, almost a fail, but just enough uh, to plus 2 from the captain. And so that's gonna be a 18 total. So you managed to reel in a fair bit of just scrap metal from the first drone you destroyed, but the second drone, uh, you managed to harvest a computer that you bring aboard. Slightly damaged, but seemingly still workable. Nice. Fascinating. Seeing that it's still workable, before he even tries to use it, he wants to fix it. <laughs> like fix this now i fixed <laughs> all right um so this is gonna get into some interesting checks right here okay in, um, in my... so i'm gonna say this is gonna be a knowledge com- this is gonna be a computer's check to try to investigate the drone's computer and, and just for point of order Yep. Go ahead. Normally, and he's normally smart enough to be like, "Oh, let me do this around everybody so everyone can see." But he's so excited, he does it as soon as he gets it. Oh yeah, he pulls so it. No like, one's there. This, like, skrr, like scrapes this like giant hunk of drone across the floor out of the airlock and just dives in on a computer check. Uh, go ahead, give me that roll. Oh, Twenty-one. Hell yeah, you guys are rolling hot tonight. All right. So, you notice some... The data's a little corrupted. Um, one, this is going to be a confirmation that they are indeed from the Aslanti Star Empire. This is not packed world technology. You de- you are positive of that. Uh, which is concerning because you've heard some bad rumors about that empire. Additionally, uh, you would know that these Aslanti drones have been... Uh, judging by their records, it's hard to say exactly, but patrolling the planet's upper atmosphere for about three days at least. So they've been up here for a while. So seeing Matt and I guess Catcher it. <laughs> Catcher, yeah, here I'll move Catcher. I can't move Catcher, man. Sorry, all right. <laughs> it's because. <laughs> But, yeah, I'll just scoop her up on the way back, and to everybody, I'll say, Aslanti, three days. Alright, so you know there's three days, and I'll here, let me, I'm just gonna drag Catcher down there for now. Yeah. Alright, so you tell them that it is Aslanti drone, been there three days. Uh, What's your guys' next move? You're kind of hovering, um, you know, far enough out from the planet that you're not sucked into its gravity. But you're still over uh, the colony of Nakondas. I don't want to do anything until we have all our shields working. If we get hit on the port side, then we're doomed. So what do we need to do to at least get some 
Uh, shield on that side. Double check. It'll be an engineer. I think, I, just down, I think we're just down in the forward, right? No, they took that final laser shot before the yeah, last one blew up. They did five damage. Oh, to, that's right. To yeah, they did. Side. That's right. Shield out. Yeah. I think in combat, it's a science officer action to rebalance, but I think out of yeah. combat, it's kind of like uh, stamina points. I believe they it just is. Just... come back over time. Yeah, I think that's not something you guys have to worry about right now. It should just, okay. like, gradually recharge as the system, like, like cycles back up. Okay. So from for next time, if that happens, then we need to make sure the science officer brings him back up? I'm just making notes so I know next time. Yeah, and we could say, like, the captain could probably, like, jump in on that role if we don't have, like, a dedicated science person that round. Okay. Alrighty. Chill I've always in. thought they, they definitely built Starship uh, combat to be, like, fluid. Okay. All yeah, at the, right. top of, at the top of the round, we could we could move, everybody could move into a different position. Yeah, like, like that, that's what I meant by, like, fluid. Like, you, you're not obligated yeah. to, like, you're not glued to that chair till combat ends. Like, say some catastrophic explosion happens in engineering and cost like goes down someone could like jump out of their seat and like try to rush over there okay uh all right so what is your guys next move as you're kind of waiting for the seals to respool um and you guys are hovering over i think we should head down to to, to the um to the planet and uh land and see if we can find our friend and find out what's going on here all right. Do we? Are you trying to like? Communi- are you trying to use communications? You said. I was going to ask. Do we hear anything going on on communications or anything like that before we just drop down? So, you set your scanners up. You try to contact. You know, Salogia to Mandalon's landing. Salogia to Mandalon's landing. And all you hear. All right. Loading my stuff back up. Maybe a car hit something or. Pull went down for a minute. I don't know what the hell that was about. All right. Just give me one second. I'm just reconnecting to like my notes and things. Yep. No worries. So while we're waiting, <clears throat> yeah, I'm really gonna try to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> pneumonia and sometimes it comes and goes oh no um, so I don't know how everybody likes to role play kind of thing I'm kind of more inactive and I know there are some people that are just more cotton back so uh, you let me know if I'm more interactive than you want it's gonna be fine I think we'll work it all out yeah 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 well, Ben, you know how I am. <laughs> yeah, you're, she's in one of my other games, too. Um, mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Looks like we're good on the stream now. All right. Alrighty. Uh, let's get make sure Discord is working. Alright, Discord's working. Okay. Alright. So let's get back into it. So you guys had just found out um you're asking about communicating with the colony? Yes. All right. So yes. as you guys try, you know, uh, Slogia to Maladon's Landing, or Madalon's Landing, which is the primary, like, little town area on this colony planet, uh, Slogia to Madalon's Landing, there is no answer, but only static. Um, so what do you guys do? Uh, do we have a direct contact for the person? Oh, Ben, you just went. 
Hello? You're, you're off again, Ben. Hello, hello. You're blinking like you're talking. Hello. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Your stream has gone off again. Yeah, okay, okay. This is something. Well, not the stunning premiere that we'd hoped for, but live and learn. All right, um, so you guys can still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Yep. So um, you guys would know that without uh, – or, like, with you could try contacting her directly on your personal comms, uh, but as you do, it would come back uh, still with static. Um, well. <laughs> you could make a knowledge – uh, you can make an engineering check or a computer's check as you investigate uh, this strange modulated static. Yeah. I'll uh, computer's check real quick. Maybe Comcast Nakondas went down. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh nat 20. Nat 20, hell yeah. Hey, that's our second one, isn't it? Yeah, second one of the session so far. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. so... You would realize that this is a level four signal jammer. It is a suppression signal. This has been put in place on purpose. You would also know that it seems like the source of it is at Madelon's Landing, the town where you guys are trying to land and deliver supplies. <clears throat> oh dear. There's only one landing place that we know of. Um. That's the only, like, official landing place. You could try to... Since you guys are so far up in orbit, you could try to do a flyby uh, over the landscape and try to use your, sip, your ship sensors to see the colony and what's what's down there. Um, I think that's worth a shot. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah let's, do, let's do that before we start trying to land somewhere. Yeah, my fear is we're going to land and all hell's going to break loose on us, so... Uh, let's do a flyby. There we got our soundboard back up. All right. So as you all do a flyby, this is going to be a computer's check as you activate your scanners. Go, Flack. Go, Flyer. <laughs> Go for it, Flack. All right, 18. No, it's not a natural 20, but it's 18. So that is, that is going to be high enough for a success here. Uh, and also, did you guys catch before I cut out when I gave you the XP for the beginning? No. no. Oh, okay, no, yeah. So you got you got some XP for those drones, uh, as well as learning that the drones were from the Aslanti Star Empire. Uh, you guys got 1,000 XP total. Does this one go by the same points? I believe like level 2 is 2,000 in Starfinder. Okay. I thought it was like thirteen hundred. Oh, it might it might be thirteen hundred? I thought that was that. I know that's that fast be. progression in Pathfinder, but Starfinder. I, I'm probably just thinking of whatever Hero Lab says. Uh, let's see, leveling. Well, up. I believe I have the. Either way, it's Look. it's you know, it, not leveled up yet with a thousand. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, so that. with that computer check from Flack. Um, you get a general layout of Madelon's landing as you fly over. Uh, you realize the settlement contains just over a hundred humanoid life forms, majority of which are human. You also identify a large incongruous structure that has been placed in the middle of the settlement. The structure is a prefabricated building with sweeping curves that resembles a fortress more than a colony dwelling. With that uh, scan check, you realize uh, that mounted to the top of this prefabbed building are two starship scale heavy laser cannons. Oh, they are positioned to defend against approaching starships. Don't be, they don't appear to be purposed for targeting uh, ground options. Maybe um, we should try to... You also realize that this building, this prefab structure, 
has been constructed on the only area in town that is large enough to land a starship. Does it look new, or has it been there a while? Um, it's hard to tell that from the scan, but you know that it is where you were supposed to land. It's, like, on the landing pad, essentially. Okay, so... Um, and if anyone wants to make a culture or profession soldier check, they can on this, like, little uh, prefab fortress building. Yeah, I think I get a something special for military culture check. Yeah, I think you get, like, a plus two, I believe. And doesn't the DC reduce by five as well? Yeah, I, was say, I thought it was. A, oh no, yeah, that's what it is. I think it's DC by five. To... Oh yeah. hell yeah, that's gonna be very helpful for this. All right. All right, I'll give your uh, your roll. Go. Uh, that is a nat one. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, <laughs> you're just like you get caught and caught. Um, you guys catch a uh, catch Zashi slipping as she's daydreaming about like oh man heavy laser cannons that would look rad on our ship <laughs> i just gets like <laughs> like deeply distracted uh we need a nuke launcher the final thing you guys see though uh with those checks is you do notice that there is a clearing just barely large enough for your ship to land a few miles east of madelon's landing Well, I think that makes more sense than uh, yeah. getting those guns. Correct. Yeah. Would, would that be out of range of the guns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You would know. So it's, it's like a few miles to the east. You would know that these guns would not be able to detect or hit something moving that far away. Okay. We do a flyby just to make sure that um, to see what we can see before we uh, drop down out of space for that. Uh, in that spot. So the thing about Nakondis is it, it is a forest planet and it is largely draped in like perpetual fog. So visuals are very hard to achieve from your ship. Uh, you're going mainly off of what the scanners are saying. I was going to ask what the, are we talking jungle canopy or, or what? Uh, pretty much a, like, jungle-like canopy. Like, the forest is very, very thick foliage. The only reason you can land in this one spot is that it's, like, it happens to be, like, a natural clearing within the forest. Like a forest moon, almost. <laughs> almost like a forest moon one. One could easily surmise. One so, small uh, step. Just a quick, quick question. Nakondas is the name of the planet. Correct. So the is that what we're saying? The whole planet is Nakondis, um, and it, technically the whole planet is also like quote unquote a colony. Like the uh, this colony okay, was so started by like one corporation. So like the planet's a colony, and like its resources belong to that colony. But the only like really living area is Madelon's Landing, which is like a town for. So the there's no other here. smaller towns or anything around there. No, that's like the only like. Maybe there's some people who decided to, like, live out as, like, you know, they wanted to go out to the edge of the galaxy, live on the outer rim, basically, and, like, hide in the jungle. But apart from, like, potential hermits, most people are going to be in that town. Okay, cool. Thank you. No, no worries. You're good. All um, right. Well, okay. Is that what we're going to do? We're going to land there? Yeah. Hell yeah. That sounds good. Ready. All right. Put her down. Can, can we tell if there are any kind of, you know, is it, are we going to be like marching through the jungle or anything? Do we need to worry about heat exhaustion or anything like that? Um, so, give me one sec. Um, Give me a culture check. See, like, what other information you've heard about Nakondas. Can you use culture untrained? I believe you can do culture untrained, yeah. Alright, 13, 13. Alright, so, so far, uh, Lei, uh, MK01, and Koss, you guys, um, all heard... 
a few facts about Iconis. So you know that it has the fog. You know that the air is entirely breathable. And it is not particularly uh, intense of an atmosphere. Like, there's no intense heat, no intense cold. Just kind of this damp, natural forest environment. Um, you know that sometimes the fog can carry a low-lying electrical current. Uh, but it is... Unless there is a storm, it, it should be, like, not... T typically not harmful. Uh, you know, there are several species that have been documented so far by the colony. One of kind of the more pest-like ones that has been known to harass colonists would be hobgars. Uh, they're like a aggressive simian animal uh, that is rumored to be able to kind of launch electricity out of their fur. But apart from that, you don't know any about many environmental hazards. Well... Yes, like like a static monkey. <clears throat> Take some dryer sheets with us to get rid of the static. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys also know you are about. Uh, let me double check the distance for you guys. Those animals were called hobgars. Is that Hob, what you said? yeah, hobgar. Uh, H-O-B-G-A-R-S. Uh, so you guys are basically a, a few mile overland trek uh, to the colony itself. Uh, the fungal, under, there's some undergrowth, like fungus and stuff. It's light, it won't impede your movement. Um, so, as you guys are headed for the forest... How are you advancing? Are you trying to be stealthy? Or are you trying to just kind of, you know, double time it to the colony? What's your move here? Oh, I say we are still you know, don't want to cause a ruckus. Yeah, that was going to be my, we're far enough away that when we landed, would we have alerted somebody? I know we don't have cloaking or anything on the ship, but um, are we far enough away that maybe it wouldn't have triggered something so that we could stealth? Uh, give me a perception check. See if you notice anyone like coming near or anything like that. Okay. Natural two. The A's got us covered with the 20. All right. That 20, that's going to be fine. You do not see anything out of the ordinary as you advance. And uh, you like, you don't you don't see any signs, like any, you know, distant uh, thrum of engines or, like, call-outs that there is anyone investigating you. Okay. So, Leah would say, um, be on the lookout. Make sure you're armed and ready. Uh, let's try to go see what's going on. All right. So, do you guys you wanting to go? Checks? Yeah, you want to do stealth? Yeah, that was going to be my yeah, next question. Yeah. Stealth. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can stealth. All right. Uh, go for a stealth check. All right, we got 19, 19, 24. Ooh, nice. We have some stealth. Five. Except for Koss. Solid, solid. Yeah. Koss gets his horns, like, caught on some vines, like, <laughs> trying to, like, shake them off. Uh, Zashi. He's still messing with that computer. Yeah, he's, he's like, still fitting. Guy he, like, downloaded a lot attention. of that info to his, like, personal comms device, and it's just, like, going over the info from the drones, just, like, swiping up, and just, like, gets his horns caught. Zashi pauses, gets a little loud to like try to get him unstuck. Uh, if you guys want to drag your tokens onto our new map area, you can drag them uh, right on this rise over here. Back up, girl. All right, coming. You realize you're coming up on kind of a natural trail. Before we step out into the abyss is this water here or is that like uh that is like a trail it looks like maybe there was a mudslide there but it is like walkable okay so um can we before, can... give me before a we move out of the... yeah go ahead can i do a survival check to look for tracks or anything if any mm -hmm. large animals are using this trail yeah go for it <clears throat> all right 
Uh, MK01, you know, you bend down, examine uh, the trail out here in the jungle, and you find um, several boot prints. Uh, the boots in question appear to be heavy and of, like, military issue. Like, these are, like, combat, combat boots, to be sure. Zashi, look. Aha. Uh-huh. Is that something I should try a culture check on, or just like, yep, that's a boot? Uh, I didn't think about I, that. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think you'd be that. able... I think you'd be no fine just knowing that they're boots. I don't know if there'd be... That's a so specific of a culture check. That yes, is. those are Air Jordan 1 boots. Oh, <laughs> those fetch a hefty price back in Absalom Station. <laughs> um, is, uh, ben, is there... Yep. Uh, look like a commander? Command went through there? Look like a couple of soldiers? Or is it... Um, I'd say with a 17, you think at a minimum 2 uh, walked by. Oh, okay. So it's not like a great mass. Uh, with those... Uh, Prince. Everybody, give me, everybody give me a perception check. Okay. As soon as I get my mouse to work. Alright. Um, so, uh, Zashi, you hear a brief, like, yeah, we're, 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 we're like a muffled like radio call going off, uh, mm-hmm. and then you hear one say, uh, in a language you don't quite understand, like it's Rosal said, shh, and um, uh, MK one with that eighteen as well. You hear the quiet like, <coughs> like cocking of weapons. Did I did I hear what was the language? Um, you did. I'm not sure if any of you were able to learn this as your starting characters, uh, but give me a. Is it believe it's linguistics in Starfinder still? Um, uh, to examine it. Yeah, I don't oh, see it? Oh, what is it? It's, um, I think so. I think it's. Um, oh, I think it's just it's just culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Culture. They, they collapse linguistics into culture. Yeah, make a uh, culture yeah. check. See if you recognize it. Not me. With that 19, you've heard scraps of this radio traffic before on newsreels. Uh, this appears to be Aslanti. Is the language I speaking. relay that and I relay in whispers quietly that language, that information to the group. All right. So where you guys heard this like chatter coming from, you hear it coming from like down at the other end of the trail. Uh, I will say, uh, you can't quite see this full trail. I just want to show you the full map, but uh, you can only see about 30 feet ahead of you. So you can see the it's really foggy around here. So what do you guys want to do? You want to try to advance or move around? What are you trying to do? Does, does it sound like they're coming towards us? They're walking, going away from us? or It sounds like they're coming towards you. Sting. Okay. Ambush. Yeah. I think they're coming along the path. Yeah, they're, it sounds like they're coming along the path from uh, this side, if you can see my arrow. Okay. Why don't Maybe we, we move, back and, move back and hide? Yeah, take cover and them to go by. And, and maybe we ambush them when they go by, if we feel like it. I don't know. All right. I can throw a grenade at them when they go by. So, um, so in that case, I'm going to have you guys make one more stealth check as they soldiers advance. I'm going to reveal to you where they are. Wow. Still not still. Oh my there. gosh. Yikes. Oh, that was 22. Yeah. At least there's a couple high ones in it. Alright, um, give me one second. I'm gonna see if I can send you this dope art right here. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys all exactly what you're seeing, full size. Hmm. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, and yes. they're going to oppose those stealth checks with perception. Jeez. You're like, no. you hear like, it will die! Side! 
and they all like simultaneously raise rifles and train them into the forest. We're gonna roll for initiative. Oh, uh, and for initiative, just so you guys know, if you nice, uh, if you click on your character first, uh, it will add it automatically to initiative. That's fine. I'll I'll add flax manually this time though. Well, that's about as bad as it gets for Flash. And then... Oh, it is. That's a natural one. I'll add Zashi in, too. So, yeah, Zashi, if you just, like, click your token and then hit it, it'll, like, automatically roll you into the order. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Who else do we have? We got Koss. Who didn't get in? Oh, MK01. Uh, MK. Did you, did you roll? I did, yeah. Uh, 13. All right, let me. I'll manually add you in as well this time. One sec. Okay. All right, you got a thirteen, uh, and let's get these friends rolled in as well. Ooh, they did not do very good. All right, so you see all of them oh, no. leveling like kinetic. Uh, it, these look like not laser guns, like kinetic, like actual rifles. Uh, Zashi. You see them all level their weapons towards the forest. What do you want to do? They don't see me, do they? Uh, they basically with that failed stealth check, they know you guys are like in that vicinity. They know we're right there. But yeah, they don't. Yeah. They haven't exactly honed in on you yet. Um, can I shoot at whichever one looks the most? Uh authoritative hmm whichever one looks the most authoritative <laughs> um, I think might be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough um all right so i'm gonna say what would you roll to see who's the most authoritative of these three angry I, soldiers I, just, I, just, I gotta pick somebody I'm gonna just, I say roll out a sense motive check. See if any of them seem to be like kind of the pack leader. Sure. Okay. I see MK01 is having fun with the ruler tool. <laughs> uh, Alright, so 19. Uh, it looks like the one... They seem to be like are wearing all the exact same thing, but this one at the back was the one that was like calling out to them. Okay. So I would like to take aim at that one with my laser rifle. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Brought a laser gun to the fight. I don't really use weapons in roll twenty. I don't know how oh. to uh Apologies. Um, so That's if you right. open, yeah. yeah, if you're looking at your character sheet, uh, you have the uh, azimuth laser rifle, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, so. I just like it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that gives you the quantity and value. Hmm. Normally, if you uh, can click on the weapons, it'll roll. Let's go. To, oh, go over to uh, attacks above your equipment tab. Aha. Yeah, it's okay. I, I also am not used to these uh, Starfinder sheets. So then just click the laser rifle, uh, and it should automatically roll what it needs to roll. Input value, full attack. Yes or no? Yes, I guess. But. Uh, I don't believe you have two attacks yet, but all right. So first, so that is a ten, and as a laser rifle, uh, that is going to go against their EAC, their energy armor class, as opposed to their kinetic okay. AC. Um, the ten, however, is not going to quite be enough, as they have kind of like dispersing coating on their armor that kind of spreads the laser impact out enough that it doesn't damage them all the way. But as they kind of like reel back, they're like, "Atu, zahid," and they like start like leveling the rifles. Uh, that's gonna bring us to, uh, Lie. Lie? How do I say it? 
Lie is fine. Lie, all right. Just, yeah, L-E-A. Um, Excellent. So, she has a razor, but she has grenades, too. Do you want to use a grenade? I think I'm going to have to move, though, to use those. Let me double check. One. Range. Yeah, one of them. All right, so you have, what kind of grenade do you have? One, I have a oh. sticky bomb grenade and a frag grenade. Okay. The sticky bomb is 30 feet, and then the frag is 20 feet, so I'd have to get close. Yep. Yep. She'll have to move up to throw that, so. You can also try to, like, move through the jungle as well, like, over this way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, where's my movement on this sheet? Um, <clears throat> 30 feet. Okay. All right. She is going to... Let's see what happens when I throw this set in. Just for grins. I'm going to throw it right there. All right. Wow. I don't know how to read this. Um, it says zero. So... <laughs> Something for wrong. for attack actions, I think if you click full attack, you can make two attacks, but each attack is at a negative four. Yeah. Oh, so, that, that's what I did. I clicked the full attack. Yeah. Right. And, and if you're doing a full attack, you can't do, like, move actions or anything like that. Yeah, so okay. removing the minus four, that'd be a four. I believe you need a five to hit the correct square. Let me make sure. I... Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's how it should roll. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll say that we'll add that as a six. So that's going to land and deal three piercing damage to both. I believe on a grenade, uh, they have to make a save. All right. So you're going to deal three grenades to both as this frag grenade detonates in between the pair of them, which brings us to cost. Thing, everybody firing. Cops <laughs> will use his skip shot pistol on the one off to the side by themselves. Okay. Quick draw the pistol. Oh, that is a 21. Nice. So it's a nat 20 crit. crit. So you're going to deal plus 2d2 bleed. Yikes. Holy hell. Um, nice. Shot. So, deals four damage, and I guess it doesn't look like it added the 2d2 bleed in. If you want to just roll that. Just do a slash r space 2d2. Hell yeah. That is a hell of a shot. Do you want me to roll that cost, or do you got it? There you go. All right. Uh, so they are bleeding for two. Damn. On their turn, they're going to lose two health. Uh, brings us to MK01. Okay. I'm going to move up. Mm -hmm. Kind of right at the edge of the, the tree line. And I'm going to cast Daze on uh, that one closest to me. All right. Uh, what so is the need a save on that? Will negates. Okay. And you need a 13. Uh, it fails. So the soldier's eyes kind of go vacant. They kind of like lower their rifle as they like stare off into space. They are dazed for the next round, I believe. Uh, huh. If it's the that's a great question. If it's the same as the Pathfinder one, that's their dazed for a round and can't take any actions. This spell. Yeah, one sense. round. Okay, yeah. So on their turn right here, this one is going to remain dazed. 
All right. Um, and I will drop prone. Hit the deck. Uh, the two that are standing. So this one begins to bleed out of this, like, ugh, this gut shot. Taking two damage. Uh, she is going to try and fire through the trees at Koss. We're going to start with that. Koss, what is your KAC? Your kinetic ar armor class. That, that is 14. 14? Okay, so even with the foliage, that is going to be a hit. Uh, and with her rifle, she does... Holy shit. Uh, she does 8 damage. Ooh. You good, bro? Fun. I'm, I'm up. This is just... <laughs> Real hurt. This lets out this, like, crack, crack, like, very quick impact. Um... And, wow, that was a savage shot by her. All right, this other one uh, saw the Lashunta's hand kind of leave the woods as you tossed in that grenade. And the back soldier is also going to try to shoot at uh, Lie. What is your uh, KAC? It is a 10. Oh, wait a minute, 12. 12, all right. So she like, raises her rifle, lets out like, crack, crack, like a one bullet flies through. Hits the tree over your head, shattering the bark, but she does not make an impact. Okay. Um, that's going to bring us to Flack. All right, so uh, Flack's not even going to move, but he's going to take a trick attack shot at this character right here. All right. And which weapon are you using? I'm using my uh, azimuth laser pistol. All right. So I think that probably... Uh, Passes the DC with a 33 yeah. stealth. Yep. Uh, <laughs> fucking believe it or not, it does. I hope so. Jesus. All right. So let's get the laser pistol. Sound. But only just barely. Oh. Yeah, let me uh, fire my laser pistol here. And that is a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> what a turn. Holy shit. Damn. And it takes it away. You go for the shot. And it just immediately, like, jams. The laser, like, can't go through the refraction at the end of the pistol. Uh, and as you do this sweet stealth check, she basically doesn't even see anything as, like, the pistol doesn't even go off. So you're well hidden, at the very least. Uh, it's gonna bring us back to... I was, in, I was hidden from myself. I couldn't even see my gun. Yeah, you, like, you know, hide behind the foliage. You're just, like, trying to find the fucking trigger and just can't do it. Uh... Zashi, back to the top of the order. All right, let's try that uh, rifle shot again. That's All right, the same one. All right, same one at the back. Uh, that yep. is. Let's see. Isn't one of them dazed still? Uh, yeah, that would that one's missed his turn, missed her turn basically because she was dazed. Okay. Are you flat-footed when you're dazed? Um, let me scroll back up and see that spell. Um. They are unable to take actions, but take no penalty to AC. So I don't think they're flat-footed. Oh, damn. I didn't see that. Uh, all right. So 14 with laser rifle. That is absolutely going to be a hit. Let off these, like, bassy shots. Uh, and with eight fire damage, uh, the one at the back looks like she is almost dead. As this, like... Like, red bolt just sears away part of her side, leaving a gaping wound. Uh, Lie. Alrighty, then. She is going to pull out her laser pistol. And this one. Shoot with her laser pistol. Hell yeah. Alright, going with that laser pistol. He's coming. Yep, you let off the pulse. Uh, it goes directly. Are you trying to hit the one nearest you or the back? The one nearest me right here. All right, that is going to be an impact for four fire damage as the pistol hits her in the shoulder plate, kind of melting away part of her armor. Ha. Uh, Koss. So... 
the term tends to be bullsy red. His eyes are already red. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he will gore the oh. one who shot him. <laughs> so he's gonna like run up on uh, the one that shot. Holy hell! <laughs> all right, uh, do a attack roll on that gore. And we all yell, "Gosh, what are you doing?" <laughs> Uh, you try to, like, drive your horns, like, up under her ribs in the armor, but, uh, this armor is of decent enough make that it kind of just skitters. Your metal and regular horns skitter off her armor. But she is, like, really, like, what the fuck? Like, as this beast just charges her. Uh, MK01. Oh, oh sorry, do you have something else you can do? Yeah, that'll, that's gonna be his turn, but he's just huffing and just staring at her. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, all right, MK01. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, stand up. Okay. And, I guess, uh, I will cast Ghost Sound behind the one who is very injured. Now, you know what? I'm just going to cast Days again. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to do the, the same front target? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's well. going to be... Is DC 13, right? Yep. That's a fail again. As she almost just, like, fingers go so slack on her weapon that she almost just drops it to the ground. As she's c continued to be spelled by you. Uh, and that is going to move us to... Uh, the Aeon, the Aeon people, uh, and, alright, so that one's days can't take action. Uh, this one back here is gonna try to just five foot step back. Uh, MK, alright, MK drops prone in the, in the forest, the overgrowth. And the, so one's gonna step back and try to make a shot against Koss's KAC again. It was a 14, was it? Yes. This time, uh, a bullet just sparks off of your horn and as you like turn your head back unfazed she like is like panicking like re-racking the chamber of her rifle uh the one at the back she's probably gonna try and shoot uh, well first of all she's gonna five foot step over here behind this tree and try to get a little bit of cover from you and then she's gonna try and shoot her rifle at uh zashi Zashi, what's your KAC? Um, it is... No, it's here somewhere. Um, 14. With a 15, she is going to hit and do piercing damage here. Okay. Again, they roll max damage. It's going to be 8 damage to Zashi. Oh. Alright. Are you still up? Yeah, I'm up. The one that one that's in cover is like screaming at the days one, just like Asute! Zul! Zul! Like trying to like get him moving. Uh and that brings us back to our sneaky little boy. Go ahead. Uh Flap. Can... Yeah, well I'll try a trick attack again. Okay, are you so this one's got some cover now. Are you trying to go for the days one? I'm going for this guy right here. Alright, yeah. Twenty one, that's a success right there. Um, go for you know, your... I forgot to mention last time when, when I succeed on that, um, he's also flat footed, so he takes a minus two penalty to ace. Oh, fire. that's dope. Trick attack is sweet. His 11 hit with All a right, minus the operative two. like levels the pistol with a minus two that is going to hit. Uh, just one shot, uh, with the extra sneak attack damage, that's four damage. Uh, the bolt just catches her in the side of the face, leaving this, like, big burn. Even though she's dazed, it looks like she's about to drop dead. Her health is incredibly low right now. This patrol is not faring so well against you guys. They got two hits off, but they're almost dead. Quick, I want to do a quick move if I can. Yeah, go for a move. Where do you want to go? 
I just want to I just want to take a little bit of cover behind this bush here. Yeah. Okay. That's like the kind of this uh, more fern looking area. That's kind of, that's one of like the taller trees. You could easily take some cover behind there. You kind of like take the shot, like press your back up against the tree trunk, you know, peeking out. Uh, it's gonna be back to Zashi, who is wounded but still in the fight. Uh, you got one soldier in the open, one in cover, and one still kind of in the open behind uh, your engineer. Mm -hmm. So I can move and take one shot, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. Um, I would like to. Will I get any cover if I join over here from the one who just shot me? Um, not really, no. Sorry. Maybe like, no, nah, I would say probably not. You're not really, really kind of behind the yeah. trunk of the tree. You're just in this like undergrowth area. Yeah. Can I try to move? Oh, I'm going to shoot at her anyway, so she's going to know where I am. If I, I was thinking if I try to move easily. <laughs> not really. Well, actually, why don't I, I'll, I'll take my shot. Okay. Uh, do I have a clearer shot for her from here? Uh, I'd say you you can get a shot off at her. She just has cover. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit harder, but still doable. All right, I'll just give it a, give it a try. Uh... Okay. Even with cover. Uh, that laser rifle shot is going to hit her and just punch a hole, like, right in her gut where there's no armor. Uh, the first soldier <laughs> drops. Down. All right, nice. one down. Uh, Lie. All righty. She's going to move a little bit closer. And she's going to use her laser pistol again. All right. Go. Uh, with a five, even while stunned, that's not going to be quite enough as the bolt impacts her, but is again just dissipated by that reflective coating on her armor. Okay. Uh, and that's going to bring us to Koss, who is in front of... The currently healthiest soldier. So, question. How does drawing a different weapon work in Starfinder? Hmm. I think it's a move action. I think it's just a move action now, yeah. Like, I, I think you can just, you can draw it right now and shoot her. Yeah, I'll just shoot her with my skip shot pistol again. All right. And that is the skip shot again. That's against her uh, kinetic. Yeah. All right. So that's gonna be let off this uh, fucking Teflon coated round directly at her. That is going to be a hit, uh, and she's gonna take three damage. Still alive. Uh, ooh, but actually, she took that bleed damage also on her turn. Uh, so it looks like she might be about to bleed out after that last hit. Uh, that brings us to MK01, uh, who's got the dazed one over here and the one that is uh, bleeding over here. Uh, I'm going to use uh, telepathic message on the one who is bleeding out uh and i don't i know it requires language uh-huh and i don't i'm just gonna, just gonna try it in common and see if it works oh see if i'm they just am. gonna say yeah surrender now and we'll spare you maybe <laughs> do you add the maybe yeah um <laughs> these particular soldiers only speak as lanty she hears this message just kind of like that same like it's what they are like this guy like shouting back in aslanti in your mind shrug all right that's gonna be their turns 
uh, she fully bleeds out and drops to the ground as the bullet wound that crit earlier proves too much for her. Uh, and then the final one... Did you want to do anything else on your turn, like move or anything? Uh, no, I'm just going to stay prone. All right. Um, this one is going to decide to fight to the death. Uh, is going to spin toward Lie and fire off another round with these, like, heavy uh, kinetic rifles. Okay. Uh, what is your KAC again? Or KAC? Sorry. It's 12. All right. That is going to be a hit. Okay. Uh, this time it is only a glancing blow, though, compared to the other shots these guys have got off. That is three damage. Okay. Uh, and remember, these is everyone subtracting from their stamina before their hit points? Oh, I don't... What does that mean? Sorry, I realized that was something we didn't go over before. Uh, basically, in Starfinder, there are two pools of health. The first is stamina, which is, like, how much you can, you know, shake off a punch and all that. When you first get hit, you subtract from stamina first, and then once that runs out, it goes into their health. How do you get the stamina? I don't have anything in it. Uh, stamina is... Let me get the actual stats up. Um, I believe, uh, you add, so you add your con modifier. Okay. Um, and calculate Your stamina points are determined by your con score and your class. At each level, you gain a number of stamina points equal to the stamina point value listed in your class's description. All right, so my stamina is, I mean, my con is zero. Okay, so you don't get anything from that, but you're an envoy, correct? Correct. Okay, so envoys, let's see how many they get. They get six plus constitution, so she should have yep. six. Yeah, so you, you have six right now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, and that's like largely why the other people are still up, I assume, that it didn't get through all your health after stamina. Uh... Okay. So she got that glancing shot off. That goes back to Flack. Uh, there's only one soldier left alive, and they're looking real rough over here. Yeah, so I'm going to kind of just move move over here, and uh, I will do my trick attack. All right, go for it. Roll 20 is moving so slow. Okay. Roll 20 has some slow days. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> That's not even that's not even a nat twenty guy. Oh, this guy's truly, it. truly yeah, disgusting. Here, Lee over there going, Whoa, jumping up and down. <laughs> and once again, <laughs> a terrible <laughs> shot. Flack is just yeah, so. Is, he's got a minus two. That's so he's still wow. not gonna hit the the AC with the minus two. Unfortunately, with an eight. Um, Flack is like so intent on being this like stealthy, you know, disappear into the shadows type person that he is just not putting any effort into his actual marksmanship. I um, skipped marksmanship and just went to the stealth classes. Yeah, we went to stealth classes. Operative school. <laughs> operative school. I love that. Uh, Alright. Uh, Zashi. Okay. Uh, let me pull again. That's what I got. <laughs> that is going to be a hit and so close to bringing her down but uh but not quite um and there's just <laughs> like a, a bolt goes like right by her leg burning at her thigh and she goes from just so you guys know two hit points left to one <laughs> Uh, so, so close. barely still alive. Goes back to uh, Lie, who is taking the shot off her stamina, but is, I assume, about to rock back at this uh, soldier. Yeah. Okay. Her dad. You can't see you. You can't see me. You can't see me. <laughs> um, All right, John Cena. All right, let's see. Go! Oh. oh. With, with the crit, even though it's a minimum crit, you just, like, calmly... Oh like, she shot at you, and you calmly just, like, raised the laser pistol, just, like, dead-aimed at her head, and just right through the head. Uh, Double tap. 
double tap. That's right. Tap, tap. Uh, and that is us out of combat as the final soldier <laughs> goes down. Holy hell. High five, everybody. Yeah, high five, everybody. All right, what? guys. He lived through another one. What? <laughs> that was truly I'm wild. forever. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Flack immediately goes over and starts checking out these weapons that they have. Yeah, yeah I want to go see who these people are. All right. So, let's get some checks here. Um, Loki, no, what are you doing, bud? Sorry, I thought my door was closed. My dog just pushed his way in. <laughs> uh, all right. So, first of all. Everybody is going to get 200 XP for defeating uh, these soldiers. Oh, so hey, close. 100 we'd have leveled. Very <laughs> close. As you look around... Okay, my dog's gone. I'm going to lock him out while he's gone. <laughs> be nice to Loki. Look, Loki's a good boy, but he's just going to try to whine and be like, why don't you give me food? I'm like, there's no food in here. Why aren't you paying attention to me? And when you yell, he'll jump and bark. Yeah. All right. I got a house full of So, um, you investigating them, uh, you heard them speak as Lanty. Uh, as you look over their armor, you're realizing they have their weapons, first of all, um, are what in this book they're called Imperial Pacification Rifles. These function as hunting rifles. Okay. Uh, so these That's are... A long arm, isn't it? It's a long arm with uh, kinetic rounds. Each of them has a spare uh, set of 12 long arm rounds as well. All three of them have a are... survival knife. Go ahead. So these are classified as long arms then? Yes, these are long arms. A uh, hunting rifle is a long arm. Okay. Um, and... They each have a survival knife. Uh, and they all are wearing this really stylistic armor. Um, clearly a uniform. They are all wearing uh, what is ceremonial tr uh, plate. Ceremonial plate armor. Um, troop ceremonial plate armor. There are three types of ceremonial. Um, so... Uh, Do they have any badges or anything that identifies who they belong to? Um, as you search them... Uh, let's see, what else do they have that you can take? I um, just want to know if you can figure out who they're assigned to or... Give me a culture check. Okay. As you examine their the coloring cool. on their armor is kind of their giveaway. Uh, Eleven is not going to be enough. Does anyone else want to go in for a culture check? I will try again. There you go, Cuff. Yikes! Wow, what is? <laughs> Cost has got his covered. Yeah. Cost <laughs> did a lot of reading when he grew up, so. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Let's get a little bit of music going. All right. Uh, with that 25 and the 21 as well, you realize that these are uh, members of the Aeon Guard. That's A-E-O-N. The Aeon Guard is basically the military force of the Aslanti Empire. Um... These ones appear to be cadets, judging from their armor insignias. So, very low-ranking uh, Aeon Guard soldiers. These were the fodders. Potentially. That's about all you would be able to find out from them. Okay, thanks. Have they any credits? Or anything uh, these Our ones do not. One slip into his pocket. Uh, these ones do not. They have no no money, just fucking combat gear. I mean, I'm interested in that. So. <laughs> no communication devices. Nope. Okay. 
Oh yeah, can we try to tap into the? This is that just? Oh, they have the, the, They do have radios. Yeah. What do you want to try to do? Can we see if the colony's infosphere is is running, or is that something that would be blocked by that uh, tower? Uh, you try to get the infosphere up, but it seems like there is no signal. Seems like it's also being blocked <laughs> by the uh, by like the jamming signal that's being put up. The A will um, give Flack the radio. All right, Flack, you slip one of the survival knife into your belt. Um, take one of the radios I as mind well. Having one of those. You want to grab one as well? Yeah, I, I don't have one, so. A right. survival knife? You can have the one from the person that I'm looting. <laughs> it's padded good. down. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a survival knife. Actually, I, if somebody else needs a survival knife, I have one. I just was kind of liking the idea of having a two-fisted kind of thing, but that's cool. Somebody else you can never one. have too many daggers. Well, dagger, 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 dagger. <laughs> <laughs> we all watch Critical Role at one time. Yes. <laughs> as blasphemous as it is, uh, I have not really seen much Critical Role. Yeah, that's less fun. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I just can't get into it. That's fine. Uh, I can only watch so much of it. That's fair. All right. I like it as like a background, but yeah. There's a table for everyone. I'm a yeah. I'm a big fan of um Dimension Twenty. If anyone's seen any of their stuff, they're oh, hell yeah. real good. Yeah, Dimension Twenty is so good. Yeah, they do pretty good on that too. I haven't um I haven't seen their new like pirate season yet, but um gonna have to go that was real good uh they anyway. just finished that up didn't they the last episode i think yeah the last one was yesterday yeah. i want to say and what's the other one motherlands oh they, i didn't know they announced a new one that sounds cool though all right yeah enough of singing <laughs> other other shows praises let's get back to <laughs> oh, our show right. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just i'm just fucking around i was doing it too <laughs> um all right so you guys want to try to continue on through the jungle as you make your way to the colony Stealthy, if we yeah. can, yes. I will try. All right, um, give me some stealth checks as you guys yeah. move on. Oh lord! I'm gonna kind of gather you guys up so I can move you to the next section. Can I use survival instead of stealth? Uh, no. <laughs> survival is more like <laughs> following tracks and shit. If you want to make a survival check to like kind of examine your surroundings, I'll allow that though. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, that's what I was doing when I bombed that stuff right. roll. So Zashi's... <laughs> that's what I was doing. Uh, Zashi, you've got kind of like this, you know, bullet firing weapon slung over your shoulder, fucking laser rifle yeah. slung over the other shoulder. Yes! Yeah. You go, girl. God, there's something so satisfying about the... You're having a good day. Yeah, there's something so satisfying about having a bunch of big-ass guns in a setting with magic. <laughs> yeah. I will say, though, that day's magic, that was devastating on them. That was great. Yeah. Good, great. I have that, too, so maybe we'll get together. Oh, hell, oh my God. Just Dude, like rip my enemies. Day, day, day. Team day. <laughs> Team days. <laughs> um, all right, so with a survival of 17, uh, you see rather simian-looking tracks, like monkey tracks. Static monkeys. Uh, and Break I'm, out the dryer sheet. The fog begins to clear. And let's see if you are spotted with that five on yourself. God, while you guys are rolling hot, I am rolling like trash tonight. Um, Love it. So Good, the fog, I'm sure come up. the fog kind of lifts. I'm gonna reveal to you this next area you're in. Uh, it's just, it's just lower down on the map, right over here. Um, and, uh, you are going to see three simian-like creatures, if Roll20 would allow me to select them. Uh, and they're kind of just doing their thing, kind of swinging around on the ground, on the trees. They do not appear to have spotted you. Let's see if we can sneak around them. Might as well try, right? You want to try to sneak around them? You can totally try that. Yeah, uh, let me see if I have, have any conflicts, you know. The... With the the check that we did before, would we know if they were, you know, aggressive or territorial or anything like that? 
you would know that they can be territorial and aggressive, but they won't like run after someone. Uh, this is a hobgar. Oh. What is a pet? Fun little yeah. fact: they don't actually use any audible sounds of communication. Uh, they take in the electric current from the atmosphere and use it to individually move the hairs on their body into different patterns, and that is how they communicate with each other. Interesting. Never. They're very cool. I really yeah. like them. I have to say, Pathfinder does have, and Starfinder has the best creatures. Yeah. They got some. They from got regular some. Just a variety. Yeah, from regular um, 5e. 5e, e's, I think 5e has a lot of, like, the classics. I think Star, especially, yeah. especially yeah. Starfinder, more so than even Pathfinder, I think, just, like, branched out with, like, they really took to heart, like, oh, all these worlds are going to have different ecosystems, like, crazy things going on. We're going to make some crazy creatures. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm going to say it's going to be one more stealth check versus their perception. It's going to go great. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Guess we're fighting monkeys. What, 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 oh, who, damn, Flack. You guys lose track of Flack as he just fucking fades into the jungle. Um, Jeez, dude. Well, Get the hell out of here, Flack. <laughs> this time between uh, Koss and MK1, uh, you are not as lucky as they just like... Again, they, they are simian, but they don't make any noise. They just like look over at you all. Or like at that area of the jungle and their fur like kind of like ripples in these like pulsing circles as they alert their friends. Uh, we're going to roll for initiative against the Hobgar. So with my telepathy... Hobgarblins. Um, ben, quick question. Yes, go ahead. With my um, telepathy, my 30 feet, because that's what I had, my envoy thing, does that, is automatic? Is that at will, or? Um, oh, you know, I'm not sure. Because I it's think it's art- automatic, but I don't know. Is it against, like, intelligent creatures? Because these things don't have a very high int score. It doesn't really say. It just says that I have. And this is a, a Lashunta thing? Yeah. Let's bust out the old trusty core rulebook I got next to me. I know. I have to. Right. I have to relook. Um. Let's go to races. Let's shut, uh... I got the thing in my. Uh, right so you have <laughs> at will days and kinetic, uh, uh, psychokinetic hand. Once per day, detect thoughts. Limited telepathy. Okay, the Shuttas can mentally communicate with any creature uh, within 30 feet I... with whom they share a language. Okay, so that's at will. Yeah. Right? So, so I could talk to them, my crew, without speaking, right? And they would receive it as long as I spoke their language? Uh, correct, but it can be the only confusing thing. It doesn't actually have a rule for it. Maybe we could homebrew some stuff, but it says that... Uh, communicating tele- telepathically with multiple creatures simultaneously should be considered just as difficult as listening to multiple people speak. Okay, so if I did it to one person at some time, then I wouldn't have a difficulty, right? No, it would just be like basically uh, the other kind of antenna would broadcast that thought to them uh, pretty instantaneously. Okay. I, uh, cool. Oh, I just God. wanted to know that. Thanks. Electricity right into the face piercings. All right, uh, everybody got their initiative in? Mm-hmm. All righty. Uh, Hobgar are going to go first. It didn't change on the um, turn tracker from last time. Did you click your token? Yes, sir. Huh, that should have worked. All right, well, what, what did you get Mine this time? Says a, 20. a 17? Yeah, right. mine says 20 for some reason. Uh, let's reset it. All right, uh, there we go. Okay, so... Hobgars are going to go first. And I honestly, I just love saying Hobgar. This <laughs> is it's just really fucking satisfying. All right. Um, so they are going to start moving in. Um, they're going to move in with a... How much speed? I got 30 foot. They're kind of just swinging from the branches. Uh, and one is going to swing down over here. The others are... One's going to move... 30 feet uh, and you see his uh, fur begin to crackle with electricity 
he is going to uh, let off a shot of concentrated static. They are indeed static monkeys. Um, and then the other one is going to move up 30 feet as well uh, and do the same thing. I would have said, I don't think I said this earlier. I'll move them 25 feet. Uh, but that you would know they can't do this like back to back to back. Like they have to charge up again with the ambient electricity in the fog. All right, so one is going to try and claw uh, MK01. Uh, MK01, what, what is your... Or it's, it's, a, it's a bite. Uh, what's your kinetic AC? 13. Uh, easily just like kind of put up one of your like thicker uh, padded areas and it just can't sink its teeth through it. Uh, now this is going to be against... Uh, two against... Uh, Lie against your EAC. What is your EAC? It is 11. Okay, first one misses. Second one is going to be a hit. Uh, as it's just like these two, like, little lightning bolts. We'll get some fucking combat music going. Uh, thanks to Sirenscape. And you're gonna take. Very, very little damage. Uh, it's going to be three electricity damage. Okay, so when I take that off my stamina points, I take a total of three? Correct. And if you guys decide to after this fight, you can always take a ten-minute rest where you can spend a resolve point, and it will completely recuperate your stamina. So that is, that is always an option. Uh, okay, as long as you have a resolve point. All right, uh, that is the Hobgar's turn. It's going to go to Zashi. Um, what was the uh, weapon that I just picked up? The kinetic long arm? Uh, the one you just picked up is a effectively a hunting rifle. So yeah. it should be the same to hit, but instead of your regular damage, it's going to do 1d8 piercing, and it goes against kinetic. Can I try to use that without... I don't know how to add it to my, like, roll 20. Um, I'll see if I can add it, but if you want to just roll the azimuth one right now, it's going to be the same bonuses anyway. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Ooh. Uh, it's going to be a 22 versus their, um, combat, or versus their kinetic AC, and... Oh, it's a D8 for both. Perfect. So that's, it's basically the same, except this time it is physical damage. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Four damage. Which uh, Hobgar are you aiming for? Say, come here. Select it. Bottom one? Okay. Uh, yeah. Almost immediately it's taken out. It, it's still alive, but that is, there's like a bullet wound in its chest now. No. And that's going to be... I'm hoping they'll run away. Uh, Lie. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. She really doesn't want to hurt him, so she's gonna daze that one. Alright, um, go ahead and give them a daze. Jeez! Well, that one I think is just, daze is just against, um, they have to make the save. Hey, I rolled a net 20 one. <laughs> it's still an at 20, but irrelevant in this case. Um, so yeah, it's a DC 11 at will. Uh, yeah, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna fail. Which is this the top one or the middle yeah, one? Yeah, the one right here. Okay, cool. Uh, that one I just gets a far away look in its little little hobgar eyes uh, and is dazed. Next is Koss. He will. He will. Wary. <laughs> He's gonna back up because he doesn't want to get hurt. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> literally it. Pieces out from these monkeys. Uh, Flack. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I just want to kind of pop out maybe over here by. Sashi, so I can get a good shot, and I will uh, run a trick attack on this feller. Okay, go for it. Twenty-one. 
56 for All the right. stealth. There you go. And uh, go in with the shot. Would you roll on that Again, stealth? Again, with the minus two or AC. <laughs> and a 15 to hit this time. That time it does hit, and just with one last, like, phew, uh, completely, even without the sneak attack damage, drops that one uh, with a smoking wound uh, to its side. Uh, that's Black up. holds up the Azimuth pistol, gives it gives a little blow on the barrel. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's go to MK01. So now I actually am going to uh, cast Ghost Sound, uh, which can produce uh, as much noise as 20 normal humans oh. or the roar of an alien predator. So uh, I am yeah. going to place the the area of effect uh like over there okay and just say it sounds like an alien predator so coming through the, the underbrush and it's a uh, will to save? scare them off is it a uh, will save yeah, disbelief? Will, will disbelief 13 shockingly the monkeys not very wise uh, you see, they again, they don't make noise, but all of their fur is like, like goes on end, like stands perfectly straight. Seems so like they fluff up on the spot, uh, and on their turn, they just fucking book it out of there. All right, uh, so that is gonna count as a defeat for all three. This might get you to level one or level two here. Need to put that. Will the uh, deceased monkey um, either bury it or put it in the woods or something so it's not like out there? Uh, that is going to be 135 XP for each of you. Ugh. I know. I, think I know. It's nice. close. No, that doesn't, right? Oh, that does. Wait, where were you guys at before? Oh, you were at 1200. I thought you were at 1100. 1200. Oh, that's right. I thought so you were at 1100. Yeah, that should do it then. All right. Well, we're not we're not resting yet, probably, but I, or I assume you guys aren't resting in the jungle right no, now. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, do you guys? I mean, we'll take some time, bury the monkey. You know. Yeah. While you're burying him, do you want to take that as like your ten minute? Do you guys want to use a resolve point to get back your stamina's? Yeah, I'd like to do that. Okay. Me too. I'm gonna say let's yeah, do that, and we can take a five minute break IRL too. I'm gonna run a quick ad break. Uh, and I'll see you guys back in about five minutes. Sound good? That works. All right. Sound yeah. good, y'all. I got a brain dead. What's the lady's name? Sedona. Thank you. We were sent here to see her. Oh my god. She's Apparently they were, they were having audio trouble on the stream, and I literally didn't change any settings, but now Drow says it's working again. <laughs> Alright, yeah, just let me know if it cuts out again. I don't know. It says in my area that service is back up, but the internet's being real slow. So, I don't know. It says there was a, quote, accident, so I assume probably someone in middle of nowhere, Virginia, hit one of the poles. But it seems like they got it passed you know, for it now. Is beer season. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we'll tell her that we were sent to talk to her. And when we landed outside of town, because we saw that there were some strange things going on. <clears throat> were you sent by Absalom Station? Or, uh, I didn't think we managed yes, to get any... Yes, ship full of supplies. Thank you for checking oh, The supply <laughs> shipment, of course. Oh my god, I didn't even... didn't occur to me it had been that many weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going. So, where's Sedona? Nice move here. Um, where is who? Sedona. Last I saw Sedona, she was packed up in uh, that garrison they made us build. Uh, the one with the laser turrets on top. They put that thing here to make sure no supply ships could get in. I'm glad you all spotted it. Why don't they want supply ships to get in? I mean... 
I mean, they Dead have supplies of their own, but I imagine they want to keep a stranglehold on us. That makes sense. So yeah, I guess we asking. need to break her out of the stockade. Yeah, I mean, what do these guys want here? Is it about that ship that you found in the desert? Well, it's it's over in the forest, but they um. I wanna wise. No, nah, it's okay. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, she's like, look, I, they had something to do with that. I, all I know is that the ones they captured were studying the tech they found in that ship. But look, the Aslanti don't know it. A few of us have been coordinating a resistance to the occupation. I've been in charge of that. We don't have all the pieces we need yet, but with you on our side, perhaps we can make do. First step is to weaken the Aslanti. A few targeted strikes around town can reduce their numbers, weaken their defenses, or both. In between, look, you're welcome to hide out here. After that, a direct attack on the garrison could flush the rest of the Aslanti out, and maybe we can free the prisoners, including Sedona. Look, the colonists aren't equipped for this. Most of us are, you know, workers, farmers. We came here to found a new colony, not to wage war. But with your weapons and skills... Maybe we can make do. We'll try to round up any survivors, disarm anyone we can, and together let's take back the settlement. What do you say? I'm in. Very good, mate. Black's ready to go. Yeah. How many Aslanti are in that garrison? It's hard to say. They have a ship that's come back and forth a few times. Maybe a couple dozen? They keep off unloading and offloading troops. I I'm not positive. Hmm. That's a lot. Like, so you look. think a couple targeted strikes would... She's like, look, I, I got some idea. ideas of what we could do to raise some hell around here. I'm glad you're in. Um, I think my, my internet is flickering out again for me. I'm afraid I'm going to cut out here in a second. Uh, now that you guys have agreed to join this resistance on the surprisingly occupied colony world, I think that'd be a good cliffhanger to leave off for this time. Cool. Yeah. Fair. Sounds good. Alright. Again, sorry to, to be, players... To be clear, I think Flack is the only one who joined. Oh, yeah. yeah I was say. Else said anything but Flack. Formally. Yeah. Flack, Flack's <laughs> way into it. She's, she's given them that extra uh, rifle that she pulled off the second guy. Oh, nice. Like, she's like... She, like, pulls out, like, a secret, uh, like, smuggler's area, like, under the floorboards, and slides the rifle in there. Um, yeah, sorry I about mean, the... I'm, I'm interested, but marching into the detention area is not what I had in mind. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. She's not gonna send you in there. She, she would not send you straight to the detention area. Um, so, Apollo, yeah, hopefully you guys had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry about this the awesome. technical difficulties. We'll get that sorted for next time. All right. Um, I'm definitely I'm gonna call them tomorrow and see what the fuck happened because I'm really curious. <laughs> um, and I am going to roll in the chat a dice that doesn't exist, but we're gonna use the random number generator to roll a d one hundred and twenty three. That is the number of followers we got to the end of by this stream. Uh, I have the follower list up next to me. I'm going to uh, count out. Which follower in the order of those 123 followers is going to get our prize for tonight, which is the two months of Super Siren from Sirenscape. And let's see who it is going to be. I will message them on Twitch as well afterwards in case they're not actively watching the stream and get to them as soon as possible. All right, even 50. Wow. Cool. All right. Number 50. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I'm looking. We're almost there. <laughs> 39. 36. 24. 82. Oh, no. You're fucking me up. <laughs> uh, all right. That one. He was 39. Uh, uh, she's, all right. 39. 42. 45. 48. Uh, I'm not sure if they're on this right now. But this is actually one of the guys who followed me. We're in a uh, Discord server together. We practice a lot of like a... Uh, Starting streamers meet together is gonna be Red Specter zero five two eight. I don't think it's you are spectre. currently watching right now, but I will send you this link later. And uh, congrats! 
Get a free uh, two right. months free subscription. And I'm gonna do one last uh, quick shout out uh, to our um, Sirenscape friends. Uh, thanks as always to Sirenscape for the amazing atmosphere and music. You can add these sounds and more to your game when you download either Sirenscape desktop or mobile app. The app is free and comes with 20 sound sets that are included when you get you started. You don't even need to register. Just go to Sirenscape.com to find out more. Alright. Thank you guys for playing and thanks everyone for watching. That was an awesome time. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Anyone still watching, feel free to stick around for one last ad break to support the stream. But you guys have a good night. You too. You See too. you next week. See you next week. Bye. 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 Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Ben.